I am Adil Kumar. Welcome to my series on calculus. We'll now take up some applications of tangents and normals. Now these applications are very important from test point of view. I have taken some difficult questions here where we are going to consider two lines. They could be tangents or normals at two different points on the curve and their intersection and the two points will form a triangle so we'll also look into area of the triangle so as i am saying the question here is the normals to the curve f of x equals to 2 minus square root of x to the power of 4 at the points p 1 1 and q 9 1 intersect at r find the area of triangle p q r so that's the question for you you can always pause the video, answer the question, and then look into my suggestions. So let's find first the equation of the, uh, normals in this case. We are given the function, which is f of x is equal to 2 minus square root of x to the power of 4, right? Derivative of this function, f dash x, is what? 4 times 2 minus square root of x times derivative of inside function which is uh, minus 1 over 2 square root x right so I hope by now this should be cube right 4 times 2 minus square root x whole cube times the derivative of inside function perfect to find the equation of normals let's find the uh, slope at the given points so so we will just simplify this derivative so we get this as minus 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 minus square root of x whole cube divided by square root of x. Let me write here. Okay. So that becomes the derivative. General expression. Let's find derivative of tangent at p and q. So at 1, the value will be, if I substitute 1 here, I get 2 over 1. 2 minus 1 whole cube which is minus 2 and the derivative at uh, 9 the x value of 9 will be minus 2 over square root of 9 is 3 right so I'm writing straight away 3 and here we have 2 minus square root of 9 which is 3 whole cube so that is minus 1. So that gives you plus 2 over 3. Is that clear to you? So these are the derivatives. That means they are slope of the tangent lines. Correct. So from here, we can always write down what is the slope of the normal, right? So at P, normal at P will be what? Normal at P will be 1 over the derivative value at 1, correct? Since the point P is 1, 1, so it is going to be negative reciprocal of this, right? So it is going to be half. And the normal at Q is going to be negative reciprocal of this, which is going to be minus 3 over 2. Is that clear to you, right? So that is important to understand. And now, let's find the equation of normals. So let's find equation of normals. Okay, so let's say at P, which is 1, 1, right? So that is this point. Here we know that the uh, slope of normal is what? Slope of normal is half. And the point P is given to us as 1, 1. So let's find this equation. The equation will be y minus, we are using this for y minus y1 equals to m times x minus x1, right? So, so we get y minus y1 is 1, slope is half times x minus 1. So we'll cross multiply. So we get 2y or we can keep it y minus either way, 2y minus 2 equals to x minus 1. So we get one equation. 
of the normal, right? Now let's also find the equation of the normal at Q. Point Q is given to us as 9, 1, and we just found that the normal slope at Q is minus 3 by 2. So that gives us y minus y values 1 equals to minus 3 by 2 times x minus 9. Let's cross multiply. So we get 2y minus 2 equals 2. And this becomes minus 3y, oh sorry, 3x plus 27. Correct? This is 3x. Correct. So, so what we get here is these two equations. Let the, let's call these equations as equation, let's say, 3 and 4. I'll keep these as my 1 and 2. Okay. Now, 2y minus 2 is x minus 1. Here, 2y minus 2 is minus 3x plus 27. So, we can equate the values. So, what you see here is... Uh, we have same expression for 2y minus 2, right? So, so now we'll equate these two equations. So both are 2y minus 2. And therefore, we could now write this as uh, uh, x minus 1 equals to minus 3x plus 27. So, uh, let's rearrange. So, we get x plus 3x equals to 27 plus 1 or we have 4x equals to 28 and that gives you the value of x as equal to 7 right 28 divided by uh, 4 so we get 7 so once we get the value of x that is for point q we can now point find the uh, point q by substituting this value and one of our equations right so our equation is y minus 1 equals to half of x minus 1, correct? We know x is 7, right? So if I substitute x equals to 7 here, we get y equals to, taking 1 on this side, 1 plus half of 7 minus 1, correct? So which is 1 plus half of 7 minus 1 is 6, or 1 plus 3, which is 4. So the point Q is... The x value being 7 and the y value being 4. Is that clear to you? So we get the point uh, R in this case, right? So they intersect at R. Uh, sorry, this is not Q but R. So we have the point R which is 7, 4. So we are done. We have found the point of intersection. And now the second part here is to find the area of the triangle PQR. So let's take it to the next page. We'll use the R as 7, 4. Here is the question for you. So, so what we found was that the point P is 1, 1. Q is uh, 9, 1. And R is 7, 4. Okay. So these are the three points. And they definitely form a triangle. They form a triangle. Now, how do we find area of this triangle? This is kind of a scalene triangle, right? How do we find the, the area of this particular triangle? So, if you want to sketch this triangle, it might look something like this, right? So, so we have 1, 1, right? So, it is kind of a horizontal line. And 7, 4, so somewhere in between. So, it is kind of like this, right? So, that becomes the the triangle where this point is P, this point is Q, and that is R for us. Correct. Now the formula for finding area of scalene triangle, so area of scalene triangle is what? Is basically half of, uh, let me write down the formula here, then we are going to use this formula. So let's say these points are x1, uh, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3. Then we kind of go in a particular circle. Like, so we let's call this point as 1, this point as 2, 
and this point is 3, right? So, so the formula can be written as x1 times y2 minus y3 plus x2 times, so when you write x2, it is y3 minus y1 plus x3 times y1 minus y2. I'll provide you with a link where we have derived this formula. So this actually forms, um, we use uh, trapezoids to find the area and then get this formula. Okay. So now we know these three points, right? We consider this to be 1, 2, and 3. We can substitute and find the value. I will also share with you alternate method, right, of writing this. later. Let's use this formula first and um, uh, then we'll calculate. So we have half of, so 1 is the x1 value, 1 times y2, uh, 1 minus 4 plus. Now we have 9 and then y3, so this minus this, 4 minus 1 plus 7 7 times the next number is, so when you say y3, 1 and 2, so when you write 7, then it is 1 minus 1. Okay, that is what you get. So we get half of 1 minus 4 is minus 3. And here 4 minus 1 is 3, 3 times uh, 9 is 27, and that is 0. So we get half of 27 minus 3 is 24. So we get 12. And therefore, we know that the area of PQR triangle, right, is 12 units square. Right? So that is how you find it. Now, there's another way of writing this and calculating. So, I'll show you that calculation. So, we could also find the area of triangle PQR. That is a quicker way also, is half of. So, what we do is, we'll write this in the form of a matrix. Remember, area is always positive, right? So, we write these points. P is 1, 1. So, we write 1 and 1. Q is 9, 1. 9, 1. 7, 4. 7, 4. And then P again, 1, 1. Correct? Okay? Now, it's kind of a matrix where you can multiply these terms. They are positive. And uh, when you do the multiplication for these, those are the negative terms. You see those negative terms, right? And first ones are the positive terms. That's what. So, it's kind of an easy way of writing and then working out the calculations, right? So, this is half of. So, when you do this, 1. So, we get 1 plus 9 times 4, which is 27, right, plus 7 times 1, which is 7, right, and the negative terms are 1 times 9, which is negative 9, 1 times 7 is negative 7, 4 times 1 is negative 4, do you see that? So you could do this, so and adding this, we get our result, and which is of course the same result, but we will always take the absolute value, right? So absolute value of all this, 9 times 4 is 36. I wrote 27 here. Right? So this is 36, right? Now we can do the calculations. 7 minus 7 is 0. And 36 plus 1 is 37. So we get 37. Take away 13. So which is half of we have to take absolute value. Sometimes you may write, you may get a negative answer. So which is 24, right? And so you get 12. So same answer you get. So that is another way of writing and calculating. So some of you can use this method also. I hope that makes sense. Now we have a, a couple of questions which are like this for practice. So I'd like you to now Copy this question, try it out. It's much simpler than what we did. And I'll provide you the solution of this question 
uh, in the next video. I hope that makes sense. Feel free to write your comments, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.